Welcome in, builders. We are going to take a quick look at an upcoming game called Zephon by the makers of Warhammer 40k Gladius Relic of War. And I believe they also did Pandora First Contact. So this is a, I think you would lightly call it a 4x game. It's turn based and it's quite interesting. It reminds me a lot of Gladius while doing its own thing. So in this format, I'm going to try doing about 30 minutes of gameplay just in the early game, talk about my thoughts about it and see if it looks promising or not. And we'll make a judgment on that. I have played through some of the earlier demos a bit, not too heavily. And I'm just curious to see how the game's coming along. We are looking at a quarter three release, I believe is the plan for this one. So we will start a new game. I think I'm going to We'll go with the Heartless Artificer. So one of the departures from their previous entry is that rather than hard and fast factions like you would have in Gladius, like I am playing the Imperial Guard, etc. These are more like characters that follow one of three kind of paths. There's like humanity, there are cyborgs, and there are these alien things. And one of the differences is that everybody has access to everyone else's tech and units. The kicker being that, let's say you play a cyber character, you have access to the cyber stuff earlier than somebody who was playing a different path. To me, it feels a little muddied compared to having hard and fast factions, but that may just be because I'm not used to it. That does kind of give it a maybe a bit softer balance because if you have something that's OP for one path, other people could get it even if it's not as efficient. So we'll see, maybe, maybe that'll grow on me. At the moment, I do think that's probably my biggest complaint about the game. So I'm gonna set myself up here, single player. Uh, we'll just go with medium uh, difficulty. I, I think that's just straight even with the AI, very small map with high land mass and no turn timers or anything. We can turn off simultaneous turns. It's not multiplayer anyways. And let's go ahead and start. We'll uh, quiet down here and let them speak for the entrance video and then we'll jump right in. We were not ready for their divine judgment. We were tested and almost everyone just failed. Their dark mysticism shattered an era of enlightenment and ushered in the dusk of the 21st century. Billions of lives were lost in a heartbeat, turned to ash and cast away in the wind. Our soldiers were gone but our weapons kept fighting, driven by an enigma in the networks. Their surviving forces waged a desperate crusade against the machines. We became bystanders to a relentless war. Now our world is an ever-twisting nightmare. Hellish threats lurk in every whisper and shadow. There is no glory, only survival. Deliver us from this trial. Reclaim our world for mankind. All right, so pretty cool little entrance video there. Right off the bat, that really, the setting that they've created here really reminds me of a game called Armageddon Empires. Uh, kind of a very interesting, almost a 4X card builder game. It was quite old nowadays. I don't even know if you can still get it, but uh, yeah, it had a similar premise where there were two alien factions that were fighting over uh, the galaxy and they just happened to fight on Earth and humanity was just a bug under their heels 
and you're kind of playing in the Armageddon aftermath of that war. Quite interesting. Jumping into Zephron here, if you've played Gladius, you'll be right at home. Uh, I feel like they've gone for a little more realistic looking graphics, still a little bit stylized here. Uh, you'll, you'll feel the map is very influenced by their previous entry. And I want to kind of talk about some people's critiques have already been this is just Gladius without the Warhammer license. And I don't think that's fair. I think iterative game design is how we get some of our best games recently. Uh, I don't think a lot of people were complaining that Baldur's Gate 3 was just Divinity Original Sin. Uh, a game can build on a studio's previous mechanics, or heck, something like Pal World can build on other game successes and mix and match things to create something new and can still be very fun. I think reinventing the wheel every single time you want to make a game is a way to end up with a lot of flat tires. And I don't think there's anything wrong with this design. Warhammer 40k Gladius is a very tightly uh, balanced game, maybe not between factions, but the combat mechanics are very refined and they're starting from that point in this game, which is a very strong point to me. Go ahead and start moving out here. We got some watchtowers right off the bat, which is nice, but not the resources I'm really looking for. Alright, so this is our engineer unit, which can found cities. We can click that and it'll make some suggestions. Let's see. Research, I do like research starts. We also get some, I believe those are called chips, that resource, which is for the cyber faction, which we are playing. So those would be pretty good. Yeah, I think I will actually follow their advice. We'll found right there. One of the big things in Gladius, and I feel from my limited time playing this is the same here. You have to be really careful with these initial troops. Uh, if you've ever played like Civilization and you go out exploring by yourself in the early game and get killed by barbarians, it's that, but these are barbarians that are like on meth. Like these, you do not send units out by themselves, especially in the early game. You are just asking to have uh, your units get killed. I do like their art style that they've gone with with the unit cards pretty clean looking, still a little bit stylized, but definitely more realistic than they were using in Gladius. All right, we did start kind of near the corner. We have some scary things over there. So I think because we only started with two units, I'm going to kind of carefully try to make sure this corner is clear. And that's going to be my early game task. We're going to grab and influence square here Let's get that inside of our city i think we're gonna go for an early research building so once we get that hex we'll grab that one next i think that uh building off of gladius success another mechanic that i really like in this game is how the research works so Oops. Speaking of, so you have to research. I believe in this game, it's three techs in a tier, and then you unlock the next tier, and so on and so forth. And right now in the demo, I believe four is as high as we go. Yeah, um, I don't know how many are planned to go all the way up. In Gladius, it was I believe ten tiers, but it makes for some interesting decisions because even if once you get your three and you can move up, sometimes it's worth getting more. Uh, early game text because there there's something useful in there and we have a lot of things that are super useful for us like right here the first one I grabbed makes my initial building have more production so I can build other buildings faster in order to get more of that I'd have to go all the way to here and build another construction yard so I feel like getting that right off the bat and speeding myself up is pretty good I'm gonna grab research labs in this case and we've connected our first uh, map feature here. We got a watchtower, which gave us influence and research. So pretty good little bonus there. We're going to grab another hex here. The different hexes can support different amounts of buildings. It's the 
I don't know what you call it. After the coordinates, the first little symbol there, hex symbol, where it says three. So I can fit three buildings in a lot of these. This one only two. In special terrain features, you can't add any other buildings. Um, I like how your cities sprawl in this game oh, and in Gladius. It makes your positioning of cities important. Like, it's not just a one hex thing and all of your buildings somehow fit in here. And then you just do like some map improvements. Like, to get our resource collections, we have to either capture these special points of interest or we have to expand the radius of our city and we'll be able to build collection buildings inside there. I think it's a pretty good system. It makes positioning very important and it makes using up your hexes and how you want to do that uh, super strategic. Because unless this game is different, you're not allowed to destroy buildings once you've built them either. So there is a lot of thought like, do I drop a building in a place that's less efficient, but I can do it now? Or do I try to hold off maybe and get that extra bonus hex? And there's a lot of strategy there. Um, Gladius has been the game I have had the most time spent in co-op of any game in the last several, several years. I have over a thousand hours in Gladius and almost exclusively those hours are in multiplayer. And the thing that really makes that game so much fun, there's a variety of factions. The AI plays decently. I wouldn't say it's the best thing ever, but it plays decently. And in three or even four player versus an equal number of AIs, which is usually how we like to play, you can finish that in an evening game session, three or four hours. Uh, it's very hard for my friend group to sit down for very long periods of time or come back to the same game multiple weeks and finish something. So it feels really good to be able to sit down and know that win or lose, we will finish that game in a sitting. And the next time you can come back and be like, oh man, that thing I did was really good. I'm gonna try that again. Or, oh, that strategy didn't work. I'm gonna try something different. So very, very satisfying gameplay loop for co-op. I feel like 4X and you have some friends to play with, I strongly suggest Gladius, and I think Zephron's going to be in the same vein. Uh, it, it's definitely got that same DNA. Okay, we got to be a little bit careful here. All right, we can finish this unit off, and I don't believe we have any traits that lower our damage for moving. Um, just double check myself here. Yeah, we'll go ahead and just wipe him out. This is him. Uh, the AI loves to get wounded and then run away to try to hide and heal. So it's pretty important that you focus fire. As you kill individual units in the squad that you see, their firepower will decrease. So it's also one of those games where sometimes it is worth spreading your damage out, just depending on what targets you have. All right, we've got two turns until we get laboratories, which is what I'd like to build. We're losing chips at the moment. It'll take me two turns to acquire another hex. Uh, it will cost one influence in upkeep, but I'll go ahead and do that. We're going to want chips next, probably. So I'll grab where I'm going to put those. I just don't want to waste two turns and not build anything in my capital. All right, over here, we did all those. Let's move turn. Yeah, these um, Isham Enforcers that the Cyber people start with are pretty solid units. Um, I like that they've got four armors, not like a huge amount, but it's a decent amount. A lot of the random things you'll fight usually don't have a lot of penetration. So they're not going to be getting through that armor. All right, well. Try to get in close here, see if we can do some more damage. These guys are some of those aliens that attacked our planet. Like the, I guess they're the remnants of the attack force. They are very strong. They hurt quite a lot, but your capital cities always have uh, defenses. So not too bad for that. We got, looks like missile launchers. Yeah, missile launchers and assault rifles. So we can defend ourselves pretty well. Uh, you don't want things to be shooting your capital because it will lower your loyalty. See where I can show that right here. 
loyalty. So loyalty is a very interesting mechanic that as your population goes up, they'll become less loyal. Loyalty acts as a percentage bonus to output from your city. I believe if it's the same as Gladius, it was 1% bonus. But if you're in negative loyalty, it's a 2% per negative penalty. So you kind of walk this tightrope where you need to keep your loyalty at least neutral, but you also don't really get too much for getting it too high. You also take a penalty to loyalty for getting attacked. Like your citizens are scared and they're not as loyal because of that. So it's really important that we don't let things weigh on our city, despite the fact that it's pretty good at defending itself. All right, we'll drop that research lab right away. All right, we need one more research before we could go up in tiers. Pop growth is excellent. We need a pop to work in every building that we build. So that's very important. We could add extra damage reduction to the units we're using. We could get a hero unit. I quite like this hero unit, but it, it uses those chips that we don't have at the moment. Not sure about that. That's a pretty good trait, but we don't have that building built yet. Let's grab the extra pop growth. Uh, for our faction specifically, uh, we get some extra pop growth, but we have to sacrifice population, or we can sacrifice population to increase our production. And we have to spend influence to reset our loyalty. We get a penalty over time. Uh, she's kind of like a mad scientist character that like doesn't care about her people at all. But hey, it's the uh, apocalypse. I mean, if you're going to follow somebody, a mad scientist isn't the worst, I suppose. Another big change in Zephron is they've added some, let's call them like light story elements, where there's factions on the map that are like warlords or remnants of the Zephon AI, which is kind of what took over uh, all the machines and tried to fight back. Or there's remnants of the alien attack force and you can trade with them, you can ally with them, you can go to war with them, and they'll like you for having various techs or traits or dislike you for the same. Uh, they're interesting. It kind of reminds me of Age of Wonders and how the independent cities interact with you which I feel is a pretty good mechanic. It makes it interesting and gives a little bit of variety to single player, where otherwise diplomacy doesn't really do a whole lot in a lot of 4X games. It's usually like you have peace or you don't have peace, and that's about it. Or conversely, they let you trade techs and then you just trade with all the AIs and get way, way ahead of them. So an interesting balancing act to be sure on that. I will say, um, nice, thanks that tech. The turn timers here are a little long for me at the moment. Um, I feel like, especially for, our, we're on a very small map, on the larger maps with more AIs, I think we definitely could see some really long turn times if they don't get that kind of under wraps. Oh, this orange line here is showing us that there's a cliff face here. Um, the third coordinate on the coordinates at the beginning here when I'm mousing over is the train height. So it's four here and two here, thus it's a cliff. Whereas here it's, it's three, it's four, then down to three, then down to two. So it's more of a, a hill or a ramp. So that stinks. We're gonna have to walk all the way around to get out from here. We have some sentry bots. We are at about half HP, so I'm not super wanting to fight those. We'll grab some cover here for range damage reduction fire out. All right. I didn't read it out, but I accepted a quest where there's a scientist and he wants me to escort him over to here. It's going to spawn in things, though, so we are not ready to take that out. I'm just going to move him here and have him wait. Okay, at our city, we finished that first laboratory. I think normally I would probably go for double research buildings, but we're not going to play that long. So let's get ourselves a synthetic printer so we can build some more units. We'll build that over here because it produces some of those. Or actually, what is that actually called? Yeah, chips. So it produces chips. So by building it here where there's a bonus two chips, we'll get some bonus out of that. Not a ton, but just trying to be efficient with my building space. Another thing is 
you have a pop cap in your cities and you need to build the hab blocks to raise that cap. So the hab block building and the loyalty building are always super important. I am going to grab that right off the bat. I'm trying to just play a little quick and loose here so we can get in a few turns. Uh, my goal here is to keep it under 30 minutes, just as a very rough kind of first look to it. I'm not trying to go into too much depth, but give you the flavor that uh, you see if you're interested in giving it a try or not. I would definitely suggest if you have any interest whatsoever, grab the demo and give it a try because it's a demo and why not? But I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying that unless something absolutely just crazy happens, I think this will be a pretty good game. I think some people are going to have to get over the fact that it's similar to another game that the company made before. But if you can do that, I think there's a lot of cool stuff here. Um, I think there's about eight or nine different characters that they're planning to launch with, so there'll be a decent amount of variety. And despite the fact that my complaint of I'm not sure that every faction having access to every kind of tech, aka the alien stuff and the psychics and the cyborgs and whatnot, is my favorite thing. Uh, it's different. I mean, I'm willing to try it. And I think the variety between the factions that I've seen so far has been decent. One of the other cyborg characters, uh, she's like a like a cancer survivor that had her mind transferred into the AI right when the apocalypse happened. And so like she can't move, like she's stuck in the computer. So she only gets one city. Like all the people kind of built this like shrine city around her. And you can't build multiple cities. Whereas for us, we can get a tech later on that will allow us to build more cities and spread out. But conversely, she'll have more like research bonuses and more bonuses for her one city. So it'll be a better city, but she can only have the one. So very cool. I like asymmetrical things like that in games. I think it makes it interesting. Uh, main game on the channel at the moment is Dominion 6, and it is a very asymmetrical game. And I think that's what despite some factions being a little bit similar, has 102 factions. And I would say about 70 to 80 percent of those are quite, quite varied between each other, despite using the same mechanics essentially for all of them. Now can we finish these guys off? We're going to struggle with these uh, alien units. I don't know if we're going to be able to kill those. I'm moving for the close shot now. Another thing they've added in this one, there's a lot more like goodie boxes. That's one of these things here. They seem to be like different types. Ouch. So there's like human ones, there's the alien one and the cyber ones. And they give you different pieces of like gear that you can equip onto your hero units. Uh, hero units are usually very impactful. Um, be very interesting since you can research all factions, different types of heroes. You just get yours earlier how that changes the balance of the game. Quite, quite interesting to see that. I think we're gonna lose a unit here if they attack them. Oh, one HP, the exact amount we needed. Perfect. And you guys having advanced alien tech is just not fair. Oh, and there's another one. We might have been able to get out of here. Yeah, this is why I'm mentioning, like, you got to be really careful in the early game. Like, these, are, these guys spawned because of that quest, but it can go pear-shaped very quickly. Let's get out of here with our survivor. All right, our city built the barracks-like building, which we're going to immediately recruit a guy. We're going to need more chips to be able to produce these guys, so I am going to have to research the chip building next. Uh, we also losing food and power, so we're going to have to deal with that. Let's go ahead and we'll drop a power building there, and then we'll grab... We have a food bonus here. There's a tech that gives food bonus for being next to the water. I think we'll grab the one that's immediately useful. All right, where is... We need more chips. I know there's a tech down here somewhere. Yeah, we'll grab that one. Do we have one over here? I 
Nine. Yeah. Okay. We'll grab the uh, crystal gross. Get some extra chip income coming in. So very, very just surface level look here. But I, like I said, if, if any of this is even at all enticing, I strongly suggest to give the demo a try. It's active uh, as of this video going up. And I know they're going to have another demo uh, window towards the end of the month. I would assume that they're kind of using these as like little test releases as they're moving up, which is totally fine. I, I appreciate that. Um, I'm glad we're kind of moving back. Oh, wow. We're moving back towards the days where games actually get demos and using those demos to not only like advertise a little bit for your game, but to take feedback and to let people try things out. Right. Can I move in there? Yeah, let's actually hide because they're going to come attack my city here momentarily. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very glad that we're starting to see demos come back. That was something that I feel gaming has uh, incorrectly left behind, especially in the, today's climate where we have so many games come out that are. I, I will even go so far as to say falsely advertised or misrepresented and you buy the game and it's not what you were told it was or it just doesn't work, frankly. And it's very disappointing sometimes that even even reviewers that are trying to do their best and they're trying to be trustworthy between their review copy and the game coming out things will change or you'll have surprised uh microtransactions or day day zero dlcs so all things i don't think are healthy for the industry and i think as as hobbyists we need to try to reject that as much as we can just say that that's not okay so things like having uh, the Steam's two hour, almost no questions asked refunds is very good. I think that's very healthy. And I, I wish everywhere had a similar uh, policy for refunds. Really disincentivize companies from doing things like that. Okay, we can use this building to make some more chips and operations, which are kind of like, I guess you could think about them like spells. We save up a special currency and then we can use them to like scout things or uh, look at the map, various different powers. Very interesting. Okay, wow, time is really flying on this. So I'm gonna kind of give some closing thoughts to play a couple more turns here. Overall, I would say I've probably played maybe three or four hours of the demo in total over the various different releases and I've been pretty happy with it. They've come a long way already with the optimization. When it first came out, uh, my machine struggled to run it. I am currently on a rather weak machine. Uh, I've got a 1080 Ti, the best value card in a very long time, maybe the last value card, but old grandpa is starting to be a little long in the teeth and uh, yeah, it was really struggling when this game came out. However, the optimization has come a long way. You can see here, it's running real smooth. I'm panning, you know, struggling it around, running just fine. The turn timers, I, I would like to see those shortened up. Hopefully that is something that they will work on. Like I said, we are playing on, I think the second smallest map. Like you can see on my mini map here, it's not that big. I'd say it's maybe like three screens by three screens, let's say maybe a little bit bigger than that, but the maps get quite a lot larger and you could put quite a few factions on the map. That's not what I wanted. So yeah, I, I am a little worried about the term timers. Other than that, I think it's looking pretty good. I think the, the theming is very strong and interesting and I think it's going to be a solid entry into strategy games. So if you're interested in turn-based strategy, they call it 4X. It's a little more on the tactic side, but I think it's a solid entry. And I think people are going to really like it. So give it a try. Download that demo while you can and, and try it out. And if you made it this far, I'd really appreciate any feedback on the format. Is this too short? Would you prefer more editing? I'm always interested to hear what people want because if um, I'm going to bother making content, somebody might as well watch it. And hopefully I've shown off at least enough to, to whet your appetite. And I will see you on the other side, builders. Take care.